No. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Abdin. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Hurry up, hurry up, Buzz. And Alice, if you print this, you'll never get a thing from me again. <laughs> I I happy did? birthday. Is that a <laughs> No. I kissed the day. No, it's Saturday. 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 Hey, you just have to just, just, just humor her. <laughs> humor her. Scott had his birthday yesterday. He was oh. 47. Yes. Right, yep, because he was 47. She was too afraid to put the hat on. I was the brave one. <laughs> so what's the date set? Yeah, a little bit. I haven't played for years, so I've forgotten how. Oh, you know. Are you giggling in the background? You know. <laughs> he took the picture. Oh, I probably did. <laughs> probably be on the website. Oh. No, it's going to be worse. It's going to be on the boat. <laughs> I can't speak, yeah. but I love Tom and I love music. I do. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite kind of music? Like Bob Shrek. Yeah, Pablo yeah. 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 or the Eagles. Or oh, oh, oh. Are you ready? Who are you? Is that the music? Is everyone are we ready? ready? Yeah, we're here. Good yeah. Yeah. Want to call this to order? We have a discussion with town planner. Bill, Max, and the 80 Gray Builder. This is at uh, Abdin's request, I believe. Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just wanted to know what our options were. Yeah. What the land was, with or without the building, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought I saw a sure. thing in here somewhere. I don't know I where just, I frame the conversation. I guess um, from a perspective that I would have, you know, just to come at it from a, a, a particular frame of reference, is that if you're going to decide to do something different with the AD Gray building, as opposed to the path you were currently on on that, um, what would help is to know exactly what your mind is in terms, and, and to be very clear about what you would like to do for the property. The next question, that, and I'm just gonna lay out this in terms of questions, and um, I'm trying to come from the frame of reference too, is as you approach someone or someone approaches the town to potentially use that property, what, what they're gonna have in mind. Clear about what you want. Um, and then also um, determine your priorities, because those priorities that you have for that use might dictate the terms of um, how you're going to sell or give away the building. For instance, you, you might prior, you know, have a priority or, as George Seaver says, a sequence of, of, uh, of things of importance, the highest being, say, maybe a public use, and maybe that type of activity gets, uh, gets the building for a dollar. And as uh, you, know, you go down that list, you know, lower priorities, there's a price for the property or something like that. Um, and then also um, be clear about um, what you want, uh, how you want to vet the applicant. And this is critical for any kind of public property because, uh, you know, um, I've had experience with some of these before and many other towns have. Most recently in Augusta, the old armory property, that's been going on for a decade plus. They transferred the property to a developer and the developer, you know, made a good faith proposal but it happened right prior to 208 and the downturn in the economy and all his plans went <coughs> south and so the property has sat there and they haven't done anything you know, with it. So, um, and the reason I'm bringing that up is that um, the town has very little leverage you know, in those situations. You can put some terms in, like to turn back the property to the town, but it's never really a you know, a very winning proposition for the community on that. So it's important to have a process where you have some criteria for how you're going to vet this person and look at their financing and their plan, et cetera, et cetera, and be very specific, you know, um, about that. And then also what conditions, and I guess the, the follow-up of that, what conditions you would impose on the property, such as um, you have, um, 
a certain set date and time to meet certain, you know, uh, timelines for like financing or, you know, getting your approvals or getting your engineering or things like that so that you can measure the progress and then have some failed fallback positions if they don't meet that, those terms on that. Um, and then um, in terms of marketing the property, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could put out an RFP for proposal. That was done in the past. It wasn't done terribly. You know, there wasn't a lot of success you know, with that. Or you can approach a real estate agent. However, keep in mind is that you know, realistically, the sale price for this property is not going to be very competitive. Um, and so a real estate agent, you know, they make money on, you know, commission, so you're probably going to have to create some terms to that arrangement to provide them X amount of dollars to market this property for a certain period of time because you're not going to get a, re you know, recoup your cost. Uh, and then two of the things I like to mention, just open it up for discussion, one was, um, just to, you know, I'm, I'm pr probably saying the obvious. So if this building was valuable, we wouldn't have be having this discussion right now. Right. <clears throat> so, um, and the second thing was, was I was involved back maybe five years ago, six, and, and you know, when I was here, we went through for a course of about a year, Clint, you remember. Right. Bob, yeah. you remember. Yeah. Abdi, yeah, you remember. Um, that, uh, <laughs> and we brought anybody and anybody who had showed an interest in that property in there we had three really, not solid, but, you know, people that were interested. There were two schools that, you know, came back a couple of times that seriously considered it, never got beyond, you know, looking at it for a lot of reasons. And then the why, you know, went in. Other than that, a lot of people looked at it for housing and um, just couldn't get financing. I had uh, contacted a couple of people I knew that were in the development, you know, particularly, um, you know, low-income property development for and whatever, and both of them um, had said that um, they weren't unable to get the proper financing because Maine State Housing was not financing properties unless they were in service center communities on that. So that was a drawback at the time. So just, I mean, just to get, you know, and, and the last thing is, is that Max searched out where there was a, uh, um, a bid put out for removing the property, and there were, we had a meeting that was required to meet there at the property, and there must have been like, you know, six to eight people that came, but there were only two, two. bids, right, Max? That, do you remember the prices? I think Abdon actually has them in yeah. the front. All right, then. The, the spread is it's like 100. But, that, but is this updated, or? Because no, that no, says that, 2012. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the numbers, well, that's the numbers yeah. we could get right now since. Okay. So no those are approximately reason. the cost. One is pretty high, yeah. 300 something. Yeah, 400. 400 is 35. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot depended on, um, you know, the ability of, I think the lower one, if I remember right, I'm pushing my memory, that they were going to be doing a lot of um, reuse of the material locally so their costs for disposal were less. But, you know, the prices are up there. Mm -hmm. you know, on that. And, of course, if, that, if that's where you want to go with it, um, we'd have to go out and get different bids for them. Yep. And those are just to give like the, just in that rough ballpark right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is there funding available for taking something like that down, <coughs> grants or anything like that? No, I mean, for in terms of funding, you know, the biggest, you know, it all depends. Well, if, if you're using it for housing, the developer would look at a number of funding, you know, opportunities. In this environment, it gets, you know, the resources are somewhat limited but they are out there on that. Um, and if um, the other, for public funding, we used to have a CDBG pot of money called public, public facilities. And if it was used for a, not necessarily housing, but if it was used for like a community center, library, school, and we could meet an LMI criteria, we probably could, we could get a pot of money for that. But the state hasn't funded that program for quite some time. And there is still potentially the CDBG for housing, um, but it's there, you know, it's a very competitive fund because there's not a lot of money, you know, in that pot. But but if housing was on the table, um, you know, that that's a potential. But it's not a, you know, I'd, I'd say it's like a 30 percent chance of, you know, getting that. Based on your experience five, six years ago, 
<clears throat> we first tried to market it, and people came in and looked, but weren't able to go forward because funding wasn't available. Financing, you used the word financing. For the housing, was that the was housing. the critical issue. <clears throat> yeah. And was that public financing, or was that commercial bank financing, or what was that? Oh, it needed to be public, public financing. Public financing, yeah, so uh, the interest rates would have been pretty low. Well, that, that they, they yeah. would have been anyway tough. I mean, I, I, I did a quick and dirty backing out, you know, what you could get for rent, and then, you know, what was my in, what was my revenue stream, and then figuring out rough cost. And unless you're, you know, getting some grants or some subsidized terms, you know, it, it's just not going to work on yeah. that, you know, under, for that type of housing. Yeah. The other people that saw it that didn't go anywhere, really, you know, we weren't, we weren't vetting like a traditional real estate agent. Was so a lot of a lot of them just didn't have the capacity to tackle a project like this. So, you know. what's the land value that just the land without the building? Well, I'd have to look that up. That was one thing I didn't check on that. There um, is it going to be more valuable down. with raw land versus that oh, building? I don't because you so. can't do anything with it. Nobody seems to be able to do anything with the building. Yeah. So you know, I mean that's the. The, the problem with this yeah. property. Yeah, well, it depends on how much land you transfer with it, because you have some flexibility there on how much you want to transfer. How much land is there with that? With the building? I think it's 1.6 acres, something like that. Acres. But that it's a part of a larger parcel <coughs> for the whole park, you mm -hmm. know, that's there. So that's why I say you have some flexibility. But I mean, if that. the building's gone, you get the parking lot. Uh, the tennis courts are pretty well. No, you. You can't touch the yeah, can't, can't touch the tennis courts. courts. Yeah. There's a way of backing out of that if you um, created a new public recreational, you know, project somewhere else. Switch. Somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Because we're still or on more the ball about. field, correct? Yeah, that's yes. town property. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are the are the tennis courts in any way, shape, or form usable? No. no. So, no. so you're gonna have to build new ones regardless. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. So. So, so if it's not there, then it can be someplace else, yes. Yes. like down by the ball field. And it doesn't it have to be tennis courts either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could put the tennis courts with that property. Yes. Yeah. It has, and it has to be, the new property has to be of equal or more value. It can't be like a $1 portion thing or anything like that. It has to be You whatever. mean where you put the tennis courts? Yeah. And what the tennis courts currently are valued at or what they got the grant for? What they got the grant for. Well, okay. it's, which I thought was five thousand dollars. No, it's a little more. It's a little more complicated. There, there has to be a, an appraisal done on the mm -hmm. property. They have some rules that you go by, so it's. But it could be done. Yeah, yes. it could be done. It would take about a year to do, mm -hmm. but what you. Well, Bob wants the next year to possibly try to market it. If I not, mean, whatever works. If not, as as I'm if concerned. not, then I think we should. <coughs> I mean, I hate to wait another freaking year, but I, I, I wouldn't want to wait. It's just either. dragging out and dragging. How long has this yeah. been going on? Four or five years? Six oh, years? Well, <coughs> since 2012, before 2012. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I was going with why having this meeting, this workshop is something's going to be done. It gets, you can't keep yeah. something. If the land's worth more with the building gone or even being used. <coughs> well, I think you have to factor in, um, you know, just taking away the, the, the value of the land is the cost of removal. Mm -hmm. That's you fine. Yeah. And I mean, you're, that's you're probably talking 200,000, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah, yeah. based on, on those prices. Yeah. Which but I think you'll need minimum on that. 1.6 acres to do it, to be able to get that, because I don't believe a developer's gonna come in and pay that that much with just a small, no. small no, you're piece not, of property. You're not gonna recoup your costs from yeah, the sale I understand of, that. of yeah. the land at all on yeah. that. Um, I mean, is there a potential for someone walking in and saying, um, I have a viable proposal for that? No, it's possible. It's possible. If the you terms You think they would have done it by now? Well, just my people come along. I, yeah. I, yeah. There's always new opportunities walking mm -hmm. in. Yeah, if you were aggressive in, you know, trying to pursue mm -hmm. this and see, you know, if you gave yourself X amount of time, let's see what the possibilities are out there and mm -hmm. see if you can get somebody, you know, and then determine, all right, we're not getting anywhere, we're spinning our wheels, then, then go from there. But um, these things take time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it will take time. I, I will say the one thing we have in our two advantage is that we own it. Mm -hmm. If somebody else owned it, it would be totally out of our hands as to how we'd have to deal with it. But the 
the fact is it's ours. So <laughs> for, plenty, for better or for, for worse. worse. Yeah. 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 Johnny wants to say something. Yeah, that is a problem. We do want it. Yeah, and that's that's and <laughs> that's that is a big problem. That's where my issue um, comes in. I mean, that's one of the water line pros in there. Um, I don't know how much water we want to throw. Uh, also, the roof is leaking. Mm -hmm. uh, Again? Yes. Uh, yeah. And she's pouring in, so I think we're one of the seams is let go. Um, you know, we'll, we'll run into a lot of issues. People are still breaking into it. Can the so town crew, can the town count, town crew handle that? The roof? No, no, the building itself. Can, can. Are you tearing it down? Yeah. Who was the one that talked about that building? Issue. Issue. Yeah, big issue for that building. Well, it might be quite an issue, quite a task. Yeah. Every time I get involved and try to save money, mm -hmm. I know. then I get complaints of that. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, it'd be between four and eight dollars a square foot to tear it down if you hired a contractor. Right. Um, you're probably looking at one hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. It's nineteen thousand square feet. Uh, I know you guys have been told that by different committees that they went in and measured it. demo work done for uh, Morton, we turned around and paid six dollars a square foot. Um, I can, we could come in and we could probably do it for around 40. 40,000? The town could? That include disposal of the stuff you got on what, the What can you do with that brick? Does it have to... Where does it, where, where can it go? It's right, clean you can put it in the gravel, you use it for fill. Yeah, it's clean fill. So you can, so you can use it for clean fill? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I got a place that I'd like to use, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. that I would like to fill in. Yeah. So, and it's just, I didn't know if it was clean enough to be able to do that, because we had talked about tar and stuff like that. Yeah, stamp tar. Right, yeah. so that's why I was asking about just to cut the cost down of getting rid of it, if anything. Well, no. But I if you guys can use it, it on, if you can, you guys can use it yeah, as use it mix it in with the gravel. Then, yeah. I mean, I don't think I mean that's. I mean. So we're. Yep. But yep. If you contract it out at six dollars, it'd be around one hundred fourteen thousand dollars to tear it down. Would be. Um, it probably cost you another ten. What would you do with a hole? We fill it in. Fill it in. With? I, I would rather fill it in with till than I would gravel. And the reason you can't use this, use the bricks that are. I wouldn't the want to make like a weak hole, you know what I mean, in the ground. I'd mm -hmm. rather fill it with material for the water. Solid. We'll you know, seep down through it. Seep yeah. down through it. Should we be thinking about putting in a, a line item in the budget for next year to allow for this eventuality if it comes to it? So we're not cut right-handed. <coughs> just, just a thought. I mean, at, at that price, we could definitely recoup our cost for at the that sale. At price, of you could recoup your cost. You right. Also, the community. You don't think so? Uh, no. In town, 1.6 acres. No, I don't, I don't think so. Forty thousand dollars. I, I think. Um, I would go a little higher, John, on the estimate, only because I'm thinking of the labor of, you have a lot of different materials and you take it down and you have a lot of mixing, a lot of labor involved and separating yeah, stuff out. Most, and most of the sheetrock's been taken out. Except yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of wood, there's yeah. insulation, there's, now I mean you could take a lot of that, yeah. the nuisance stuff out, yeah. Yeah. metal yeah. and stuff like that. But it's $65 a ton to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, I went out, I went out and bought Prices for demo and building. Yeah. I went out and walked. According to this, it says we looked at the fifty three thousand back when we what the lands are at about there. I'm looking at the right one. And um, 
back then for this area, the average was four. One is the field, four. the other one's the house. Uh, for some <laughs> reason, it jumped up to six when we done that trail work. Is this the one on the Oklahoma Square that has the heat? It's the nothing to me. But the one and two square. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a school. See, yeah. This is that's that triangle. Okay, yep. yep. So yep. I'm just trying to figure out. The other issue you have there is you bought another piece of property there are next people to that. Who are going to restore that. What's that? The other issue you have there is you bought another piece of property next to that. I paid ninety thousand dollars years ago for it. So you do have quite a chunk of money in that area. Mm -hmm. Is that where the house used to be? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, nope, because it'd be 1.6 acres is right there. Yeah, but is that, that's not that field. field. I know. That's the field. The field we want, yeah. we want to keep the field. Mm -hmm. I, I think we ought to look at that. What, Pilbrook Field? I know it's heresy. Well, I, it's total heresy to even bring it up. It's an can we But if, if you want to sell that piece, you may have to think about including that with it. The field? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'd look into that. Oh, I totally. I'm not. I'm yeah. not Can we put the tennis courts over where the ball fields are now? The n the new ones. There's not a lot of space over there right now. There, there must be wetlands. But they could. There's all kinds of acreage over there. I mean, yeah, you just go they could be put over there. The same wetland issues that we did with maybe yeah, putting too. a building over there. Yeah. I don't know. <coughs> 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 Don's teaching us that. Nothing. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to I be mean, tennis courts. Huh? Yeah, it could it be, be any be you know any recreation. Anything in useful value. Anything for public recreation. Yeah. Oh, well, that gives mm -hmm. yeah. you some. Okay. The field you built, you could have done If you're going to so pursue this, I would, <coughs> you know, you definitely want some, there may be some uh, people to give you some um, a pre uh, guesstimates on the land values, some local real estate mm -hmm. agents. We don't know any in the office, do we? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not at all. Well, you, you want an arm's length kind of. Yep. Assessment on that there. We know some of them. But yeah. the other well, thing, too, we could also offer the foundation and then they could turn around and see if they wanted to raise money or build a building or put a building on top of that. Put a building on top of that. Is that foundation? Yep. And the reason that is now you're comparing <coughs> to apples. Right. Because that, where the ball field is now, yep. plus the town property, but the only thing I had to worry about was how much hay I was getting. Over here, you've got a building that people are breaking into, you've got a roof right. breaking, um, water froze, pissing all over the place. You know, you, you've got there's a lot more issues than the insurance, you know, that you're paying and everything else. Mm -hmm. so. What was the value at it? Uh, the way I understand it, it's like 53000 just from my end. That's the way I take it. I mean, All right, that so that, that's this, the these two here. And then this piece is valued at 24, 2.23 acres. So the, together, you're talking $77,000, $78,000. Yeah, so it's 53 with the piece that's just across just the street, yeah. which is that basically useless. Yeah. So you could put those two, which would be, yeah, like you said, 2.42 acres at 53000 So you could pretty much come to <coughs> recouping it. And if you left the foundation, is that what you was talking, leaving the foundation, or still no. fill it in? Mm -hmm. still, fill it. still fill it in as a that, that vacant way, lot. So someone can start clean. All liability away. Okay. I'm not quite sure the foundation has much value. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I thought you was talking about. So. But that's going to be a year. You could take us that long to get in the budget, and oh, could you be done in this year's? It would be done in this year's budget. Yeah. Maybe. Pretty much an open slate right now. Yeah, if you're going to I mean, proceed for that, I think um, it would be prudent to take another look at those numbers to try to make sure, just to make sure where you would have ample funds and the, the yeah, budget. Yeah, but all I have to worry about is my disposal costs. We get paid whether we're doing that yeah. or we're doing something else. All right. And I'm a nonprofit. Um, you know, 
But it doesn't matter now. You can hire the people. So that was just disposal money you were looking at, John? Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. my future was what? Yeah. I have to have a nice career to pay. Yeah. You'd like to be on that, wouldn't you? I think, I think the property's going to be way more valuable than the way it is. With it gone. With it with the building gone and that law, anybody can build whatever they want. That's so acceptable the, with yeah. village district. I and believe that's what it was. Is analysis of what the uses that were allowed in that area, and there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite a few. <coughs> I mean, John, did you have something to add? I was just going to ask a question. Johnny had some estimate on how long it would take to uh, take the building down and dispose of it. I mean, in timeline, as far as Three months, four months. I mean, oh, no, 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 no. Wouldn't even be a month. Okay. It's a downtown garage. Um, it was out of 200 by 50. We had it flattened in 15 minutes. Oh, and we <coughs> got the Excuse me. Okay, I'm just trying to. Because this stuff you'll have to haul off. Not all of it. Not all of it. We've been arguing about this thing. I see that even if it costs the taxpayers money to tear this building down, and we will get revenue back from taxes yep. down the road. It needs to go back into the tax roll. Yep, no question. It's it's been way too long. We've been dumping yep. money in this thing for a long time. Yep. That's what I'm trying to get at, but I just assume if we can recoup our costs to try to do so as best as I'm possible. Surprised. I'm really surprised to hear the roof's leaking since we just had it fixed. Disappointed. And the water pipes are froze and burst. Exactly. I just want to uh, speak for the community foundation, which is clearly pretty disappointed by this board's decision. want to continue our vision, whether you share the community center vision, and we pretty clearly don't right now uh, for this town or not. We do. Um, uh, we will be doing everything we can to get that petition um, certified by Eileen in advance of, I think she told me, April 4th deadline, we do 25 signatures, I think it is, before we come to you guys to certify it and put it on the budget. We will be making a very, very simple question. Something like, do you quote, do you approve of the town selling to the Modoma Valley Community Foundation the 480 Gray School Building and property for one dollar? Period. The intention of the foundation, I mean, the Modoma Valley Community Foundation, will be to create a uh, community center for, Wall for all Walterboro residents uh, on the site. sense that arose actually during our survey is that you may be aware that people thought this was a town venture and they said no we're not going to do anything it's straight to their taxes so uh, about 10 percent i think of the negative responses we got mentioned specifically we don't want the town to build this so they didn't understand the survey that's just a, i think you saw that in the results um, the community foundation would also like you to know uh, in the spirit of the Unsolicited offer next week of buying the property completely of 
solving the town's financial and legal liabilities for the town and the property for one dollar. Uh, that will be uh, advertised and, and written about in the papers. We hope that that will at least stimulate some discussion. I think uh, when I hear conversations like this where you have a 200, and, let's say $225,000 investment in the building, not going to keep it, let's say just building repairs recently, and then you're considering spending between Johnny's 40 and then some contract $120,000 in additional, we're about $30 million to tear it down. It would take you decades and decades and decades of the highest taxation of the fanciest townhouse on that property to recover $300,000. It's a simple tax rate multiplication. You figure out what you build on it, what you get back. Uh, the variable piece that John is suggesting, he could do it, or the contractor could do it, doesn't really uh, affect that equation because the $200,000 is already spent. Uh, it's gone. It's money gone. I just wanted to make you aware of all these things. I'd be happy to have to answer any questions. I suspect we don't have any. Um, we would very much like to work with the select board on this. We've been trying for 18 months. No less feeling that the community center is not useful for this town, not desirable, and maybe most importantly for your fiduciary consideration, cost effective, given the money you've already, as everybody has said, sunk into this dry hole. It's going to take you a long time to get that money back out under the most optimal circumstances we suspect, and we think we have a better notion. Thanks. I, I have an issue with this. Um, the only tax money uh, that's been spent there was buying a house. The interim money is in the bank that was given to the town of Walmart for recreational facilities, so it wasn't tax dollars. I mean, let's, you know, let's get everything out here. And, um, we have $90,000 into it. We bought that other property. My crew went in with the other L off. something thousand yes it's gone by we lost it it didn't come out of my back pocket of taxes this was money the town had that somebody left the town so we turned around and we thought it was going to be a good thing it just turned out it wasn't a good thing now we're talking about a building that we've had for quite a few years we're turn we're turning around and we're taking care of abandoned properties now, we're paying for it. What's going to happen to that school? <coughs> with the roof leaking south now, all right, the seam is blown back, okay, because there's no heat in there. You're going to start having other issues in there. Okay, so how long is that going to last? Is the town going to end up doing like the same thing happened with the Y? <laughs> we don't want it no more. Here you go. Is that going to happen? Go ahead, Seth. So, uh, I, I, if I said taxpayer money, I you did. You did. If I did, uh, I meant town money, and I'm clearly aware of the JFK that was fund money. Yeah. According to Eileen, uh, whatever proceeds come out of this sale or whatever of this property must go back into that fund, exactly. which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, not everybody agrees in this room on that, I yeah. think. It, it, I think it can't legally go back into the general fund. So that's one thing. It is two hundred thousand dollars of town money, two hundred twenty. Yep. It, it that's that's a big piece of money. So I didn't mean this taxpayer money. If I said yep. it, I apologize. Yep. I agree with you completely. It's ninety thousand dollars clear exposure to the budget was tax money. Don't take that for granted. Yeah, that was. Um, we think we have a plan. We've been working with our architect for, uh, and that's we. we for, I'll make it very brief. Plans, drawing, time phasing, the whole thing. Uh, you may not choose to credit that, and I think that's too bad. Uh, you, the board, in particular. Um, John is actually absolutely right. I'm aware that there are big problems. We are aware. We're grown up people. We're talking about vice president of a local bank for years. He understands many far money far better than I do. He thinks it's viable. He's done the fundraising. He's raised close to a million dollars for this uh, town record. That's not to sneeze at, and you can discount that if you like, but 
that's why we believe that we'll put this referendum <coughs> item on, and if we, if we, if the voters say we're going to do it, um, we will see us do it. Uh, it may not be easy. It may take longer than we think. We understand you have to remediate remediate problems in the security of the building, with liability insurance, all those things. We get all of that. We're not children. It's a big job, but we believe this town needs a community center. You may not believe that. I don't disagree. Well, we believe this, and we're told by multiple people this is the most cost-effective way to get one in the shortest period of time. We choose to believe the professionals we paid money for, too, for that opinion. And I'll just be, you know, be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Okay. Let's get things straight here. All right. The community foundation, as far as the ball field, has done great things. I don't have a problem with that. They do good work. They've done a lot for the community. It wasn't a million dollars. It wasn't seven hundred thousand. Right? The price was six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. They did not have the money. Okay. Then all of a sudden, Lee Smith and I looked over the plans. Okay. And I'm not in the bidets or, or anything like that. All right. We turned around, we broke that ball field down, and we got the bids to come in for that 300 and something thousand dollars, okay? Now we've got this building here, which you keep telling me that it's cheaper to rebuild it than it is new, and I had a building that was $800,000, all right, up at the town garage. It was cheaper to build a new building than it was and so the town hasn't gotten any involvement in any of this architecture. <coughs> you know, we're a no frills town. I'm sorry. You know, and that's what it is, and that's what I feel it is. Um, I've heard different things from different architects. Um, the ones that they chose and what they're telling them they want, I mean, we just can't afford it. And nobody else is in. And even, you know, the community foundation is great. I love the ball fields, you know, and what they've done, I think it's a great thing. But let's not go say it was a million dollars. Let's not go say it was $800. Let's tell the truth, you know, because it is documented, all right? Um, but they went quite a few years trying to raise that money. And what I'm saying, Seth, is how long do you think it's going to be raise the million or so dollars for this building is going to keep deteriorating. And then people are going to start complaining there's broken windows, it's an eyesore, and everything else. And then these guys, well, what are we going to do about it? Well, the good news is if you sell it for less for a dollar, you don't have to worry about it. Well, yeah, we It'll do. Because well, it's still a building in the town of Absolutely. Absolutely. But we will have legal liability for it. The town won't. And you can force us to tear it down We understand that, but we're not stupid. But we need to tell the truth. We need to tell, you know, the ball field wasn't a million dollars. I we need it was to tell. It wasn't 700. I've seen numbers. That seem I, I don't care if you've seen numbers. I, I was there at the opening bid, all right? And I can tell you what I can show you the opening bid the first time around was $630,000. Until Lee Smith looked at it. And then I looked at it and said, what? And then we went through it. It took us less than a week. And then we went and talked to the engineer. I mean, they wanted everything. I mean, come on. You agree, Tony, that the ball field's a good thing to do it right. Yep. That it's an expensive for Walls Road back then, whatever yep. the number was. Yep. It's expensive. Everything is more expensive now. God, I don't disagree. Uh, Believe me, I know. Our no budget. sense is... For example, that if we couldn't, if we discovered that we couldn't rebuild it, we would tear it down just what you're talking about doing, and we would put up a buffer building or something like that, which is just as fearful as it was. We don't anticipate doing that, but we have thought of numerous alternatives before coming to this conclusion and moving forward with this. Uh, and, and the interesting question I would ask, uh, and I'm, this is really a question, I don't know, I'm curious about how the board members, who are people, who really count here and who've made the decision feel about uh, how would they feel about a, a, if a citizens initiative did in fact pass and not just by a little but by anything like the margin that our survey is 
for twice. I wonder what your response would be. You, you wouldn't have any choice. You'd lose control of it. He's good. John. My question is, if they buy it for a dollar, the value is still there. Are they going to pay taxes? No, because they're a nonprofit. So it's a wash. We're getting no money back. How are they going to make it a Waldberg Community Center when it's not part of the town? It's now in private hands. Does that have to come to a vote by the town to accept the name and thing? Or is it totally different? But this won't be over the town. Can this organization? got to be a nonprofit to do what they're doing. There's no taxes, so if they hold it for 10 years and lease it out or whatever, we're still getting zero amount for what we got. So there's no advantage to anyone in town to have these people take over. You know, if we can't generate money or get something out of it, tear it down. Just one second, John. Bill, since you're here, can I guess? I did have a question for you. Have you been in there? I know you was here in 2000. Yeah, we walked back you've in. Been, you've been through that now, okay. That's right. how you've John found out. Yeah, that's how John figured out about the, uh, the bike first bike. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I don't get too taken back with that, only because, you know, the building's vacant, those things happen. Right. And, you know, that building needs to be renovated. Those things are gonna have to be addressed. There's a lot of, yeah. you know, demolition you know, if you're going to renovate the building, there's a lot of demolition to be done. So I'm just kind of curious compared to way back when. Yeah, I mean, you know, before uh, the Y, well, before, we, you know, the Y had it, uh, you know, they had stripped walls down and things like that. So it was in a more finished condition than it is now on that there. So. Go ahead, John. I, I was just wondering, you know, even though it was just a piece of property, leveled off buildings and so on. Couldn't the foundation still raise money for uh, um, you know, a community thing? Um, you mean on that site? On that site. Certainly. And that way they you wouldn't have to worry about handicap issues. You know, you mm -hmm. wouldn't have to worry, you know, about everything else. And that takes it right out of the picture. You so, know, would that be, you know, and that's what I told the selectmen Workshop. We don't have to be quite so quiet. Right. Well, well, if the town were to say, I know, yeah. I should. <laughs> 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 to the uh, Foundation, listen, we're going to tear this building down, make the property safe, we're going to drain it, we're going to French drain the foundation so that if you do build something on top of it, it's not going to be a problem in the future. Yep. We're gonna, and then we'll give it to you for a dollar. If you were to say that to us, we would say that presents us with sort of a new challenge, but we already have estimates on a new building of about 20,000 square feet. It's more expensive than what we're intending to do. It's more expensive. We could save some money if the foundation was there and it would certainly be reusable, I think. No. Well, I, I don't know. We hadn't really considered the foundation being in there. We were thinking we'd put one in. At about $120, $130 a square foot, uh, it would be cheaper to salvage the existing building. That's the cheapest you can build any kind of publicly accommodation style building with full ADA compliance, sprinkler systems. It's likely to be more than that for a brand new building. And these aren't my numbers, I'm not an architect. I got these from Heliotropic uh, Technologies and from Glenn Thorne, who's a, quite a reputable, he did all the work for the lot that we paid for. We paid 35,000 bucks to do their design work. And you know, their design per foot was much higher because they wanted sort of a gold plated Y. That was a different thing. Uh, and that was using the existing building. If you were to offer it to us, we would certainly consider it. Absolutely. Well, but one comment about the town barn. You spent $800,000 on an empty shell that you can drive a lot of trucks into. That's not occupiable space. It has no conventional heating. It has no ADA compliance. It has no uh, ADA, internal tempering. ADA requirements all down. Well, okay. But okay. there's no space inside the building, multiple floors. It, it's a very low burden. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Let's not play games here. Because an office building, no, all right, is it's $80 square foot. Not no, and all this building right now is eighty dollars a square foot to build. Well, we could, and that's from your architect, and I have my own architect and engineer. This is.
quite a difference between somebody else's price and then you go a no frills price. So let's let's not keep throwing numbers away and you know popping numbers every time because I'll go back to back with you on that. <laughs> All right. Shoot. The only thing is, I just asked you is if it's a level piece of land. Yeah. All right. And the town doesn't have to offer it to you, but if they turn around and say, okay, it's a level piece of land, you know, if you guys, you know, want to turn around and fundraise mm -hmm. for a new building, you know, go ahead. We're not stopping you. But we're not going to do that without some kind of commitment from you guys, just like we couldn't do it now. You, we can't fundraise on wait a wishing wait a prayer. The, the wishing a prayer, I mean, yeah. that's $90,000 this town bought that property for. It's not a wishing a prayer. The same thing was done over there with ball fields. I don't know what's changed. The, 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 the difference, I think, is there was a sentiment with the ball fields that the town wanted to do this and made a commitment to work with the foundation. Yeah. We're not asking any more than that. And, and that's what I'm saying. But that's been withheld so far. Right. And now you want to sell the building. So I'm not, I don't what, want to what, what are we missing each other here? I don't want to sell the building. I want to tear it down. Right, tear it down. Then, then it gives you something to stand for. And if the town fathers agrees, it'd be a good idea. Then you jump for it and do whatever you want. It's the same thing with the ball field. And the town was behind you on the ball field. But it, you're not comparing apples to apples. This is an old building. Sure. sure. All right. That is deteriorating every year. That's right. No question. All right. Uh, now we got the friggin' we got the roof okay, that's leaking. Old scenes has no fly. So you're going to end up having to re roof that. If you turn around and you wait, it's just going to keep getting worse. Of course, we're aware of that. I mean, it wasn't on our watch that this building deteriorated to its fucking sunset. Okay, it was on my watch. <laughs> what the hell? I don't, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's an old building. You're, you're bringing up this history, and I'm just pointing out <coughs> we want to do something. We don't want to just sit here. But I have seen no proof. You want to sell it? Sell it. I don't think there's a ghost chance in hell you'll be I, able to. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to get yeah. back to Bill. Yeah, I yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Now, they're Thank here you. and they came for a reason, and I think it's important for us to have a conversation with them about possible next steps. That's we did, what I'd like to do. We voted to aggressively market it for a year. Mm -hmm. we, that, that we've already done. So are we looking at how to market it? And then plan B, if it does, at the end of that year, or are we are we changing that? Well, I think what's key is the questions that mm -hmm. Bill brought with him mm -hmm. need to answer some of them. And but was that the same one we got? Yeah. Okay, so Julie sent us out the yeah, question. Good. Yep. I tried as good as I could. I think it came back, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, but I tried yep. to address. Yeah, I, the if question. you if you are yep. going to take that time to market it, you know, um, you should be clear on what you want. What mm -hmm. your priorities are, otherwise, you know, you know, you don't know, you know, what the responses are going to be. If someone's interested, it's kind of, you know, capricious, and you know, mm -hmm. the response if they're not clear. So, um, I guess that the onus is on you to collectively to say, all right, this is what you know. Here's our time frame. This is what we want. Mm -hmm. This is what we expect of, uh, you know, someone who's interested. What kind of credentials they should have. What we're looking for in terms of their financial and uh, technical capacity to undertake this, um, and then you know, then you can proceed. And also, you know, how you want to do this in terms of an RFP or real estate, or to task the town to do it, put some advertisements in, in the paper, or contact developers, see what interests there are, or, you know, other community, uh, you know, groups in the town, things like that. But the critical thing is, what do you want, and what are your priorities? I think. I think. <clears throat> not to talk for Bob, but I think Bob's point was, you know, the market was a lot different the last time we went through Oh, wow. so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it was just bigger in the year. Something may happen, and if not, you know. Yeah, I think the trick is, is um, you know, the two, you know, the, the, the interest that we had in this building were, was for housing and or some sort of community use for it. Mm -hmm. they, they seem to be the top mm -hmm. of the list on that, so. You, you brought up in one of your papers uh, something about a, a um, college, two-year college yeah. or school. And I was just wondering, was that just sort of 
So I don't know, or was there a, a, was there a reason for saying yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, some yeah. background context for people who don't know this or are listening or just don't know. Uh, in the Economic Development Committee, uh, Bill and I are work trying to get Waldoboro to have a comprehensive economic development strategy. Some for projects for this. Some period. projects yeah. to help with business growth overall. And um, we presented four projects, two of which were sewer expansion. One was uh, sort of a connecting the downtown with, route with the route one, one. Yeah. and one was a community center. Uh, these are all just merely concepts at this time. And if there was something to say, this can't be done because of big reason X, then we would just move on from it. It, it was also to encourage other members to have another similar idea like, oh, that community college idea is great. Why don't we do that, but in this different format over here? But it was all just purely examples at that time. Yeah, the, 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 we picked the school because it was a place setter. Mm -hmm. It was more, the emphasis was more on um, technical training, aquaculture, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it wasn't uh, more programmatic emphasis instead of a place. We had kind of envisioned, um, you know, a, um, a small, you know, hub type camps, a camp is very yeah. small, and then using, a, there'd be a lot of outplacement, you know, working with industry like for apprenticeship and things like that. So the place wasn't as important as, and this was just like a perfect venue, yeah. 80 gray at the mm -hmm. time, so. Okay. Just, just to put that in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was no yeah. specific. No, no. Mm -hmm. There's no, what you saw at that meeting is all there is right now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was more of a creative, but the emphasis was on the activity, not the, the location. Not the location. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys could make one in North Waldoboro for yeah. Yeah. to this argument. Well, we, we had a culinary arts committee that yeah. looked into yes. yeah, right. and it wasn't economically feasible. No. 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 Well, the housing is one thing. That's a need, certainly, mm -hmm. for the entire mid coast. <coughs> um, you know, housing would be in something I think would be good for the town. But would the would the property be more, um, oh, how do I want to say this? Uh, would it be better if the building was taken down and then put on the property, put on to be sold? Would it be better for people who wants to buy that property than not to have that building there, just to have it taken down and flattened and sold that way. That's what Abdon was talking about when he yeah. was here about yeah. would it be, and that's what you didn't have. No, yeah. it, well, in re you have two different types mm -hmm. of buyers, obviously, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, and they present different challenges. I mean, you could probably, if you had raw land, you look at the area, so a housing around, you might want to put a couple of houses there. If you have the park next by, mm -hmm. it would be a nice, you could even put uh, some multifamily units in there or something like that to match the area. Mm -hmm. Would zoning permit an office building? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Planning board approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's not, you know, there's not a high market for, for that kind of use. No. The, the building itself, you know, presents some, you know, it has some attributes if you're, you want to preserve, uh, a lot of the schools are turned into housing um, or some sort of a Senior housing and type. things, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's also, a lot of that for yeah. the old schools. And that's a very, there's yeah. a you know, good track record for mm -hmm. funding projects like that. But I think you know. this building has gone way past um, um, renovating, I think. I mean, you've got, you, now you've got a roof that you have to fix. The piping has frozen and it's, it's just not feasible to me to have somebody renovate it and put it into something. something I think it would. Like take a lot of money doing something like that than to just, if we just took it and took the building down yeah. and laid out, I mean, if we could do something with the tennis courts over at the ball fields and, and get out from under that, that would add more to the, the value of the land. And I don't want to take your ball field away down below, but um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option, you know, and I think this option would be better than to sell it with the building on it. He's got a question. I just wanted to say, I understand that it might be more marketable with that ball field, but 
at the same time, something to think about is that in the summer and fall months, that ball field is used all three to four or five nights a week oh, by yeah. our kids. Yeah. Doing different, like I run all kinds of programs there, so it's just something to think about. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. It's I just want to put that out. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, don't beat me up now. Don't beat me up. Oh, no. no. Well, you know, it's hard to know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't have an answer whether it's more uh, more advantageous to take the building down or to leave it up for a buyer. It would be, depend well, on the again, buyer. You have two different. Right. Two you have different. Yes. You'd have different. Two different right. Quite two different. Buyers. Um, I, I guess whatever, you know. Uh, and the funding, tax. what is the funding for that's available now? Um. To turn it into to what would housing or something. Like yeah, is yeah. I think there's limited. Uh, there is some possibilities for um, for housing, subsidized housing. Mm -hmm. um, I, you probably have more of a market for just market housing. You know, con, you know, con, you know, building yeah. condominiums. There's a, you know, Walter World doesn't command. We we did a quick and dirty check on prices of condos. You know, in the area, and we're we're not. You know, so you have a limit as to how much you can invest in that structure. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. develop it for housing. It's just a cap on it. Yep. Um, if it had water views or, you know, or something like that, it might be more about. It's still not a bad location for something like that. No, it isn't. But I, I still think you're gonna. Someone's gonna spend an awful lot of money to renovate that building, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they want to do that. Well, that, I mean, that's the key. Is you have to find. It would be the. We'd have to find value. if we found yeah. somebody. They would. Who would that would be their issue? I no, I know. But, yeah, but would it be viable for them to renovate this thing? They for would know that millions of that would be up to no, them. No, and then um, would it be viable for them to do that and put in like a condo? Would they get their money back after doing this? Well, that's something they that's, would have to. That's they there. would. I mean, realistically, you, you're buying a shell. Yeah, All yeah, the systems yeah. have to be replaced. Yeah. Piping, heating, you know, the yeah. whole. Can we, I mean, we, we can, we have some options. John has some ideas of what we can do with it. We can put money into the budget, but we could still, couldn't we still advertise it? And if somebody comes by and the bet, to get back on the tax roll, if someone's going to buy it, then we get taxes for it, right? Next year's budget. This coming budget. This coming budget. This coming budget. Yeah. 2019. Yeah, we could still yeah. go fine. Scott. Yeah, and then we could do that, Charles and then Scott and then the next step. Okay. I can still get that. Oh, that's okay. How much damage is going to be done with that roof leaking the way it is? Oh, I'm. Yeah, we we'd have to get you have to get up there and take. You need an engineer up there to take a look and see what the remedy is. I mean, it's obviously going to cost some money. It's, you know. And that's what we're running into. Yes. When something yeah. happens up there, I come to Julie. I tell her. Money. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, but something has to get done. Yeah. Um, the ice has damaged. How? What, to what extent? We don't know until. Uh, you don't want to know until it falls. Yep. Yeah. Until yeah. And you can't get up there and break up the ice because yeah. then you're going to ruin the rest of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, every time it freezes, it kind of stops. But, right. you know, but, would that yeah. be the buyer's responsibility, or would that be our responsibility as a town? Well, again, um, you know, I think if you're going to market this property or add the building to sell it. Um, I wouldn't expect to get much money for this mm -hmm. at all, I if any. Um, I, you know, realistically, um, I don't think it has. You know, for someone who's going to then invest, you know, a significant amount of money. You know, I mean, you could do that. You could, you know, assign a price for it. That that's your decision. But um, it, realistically, it, it's, I don't think there's a high value for that building at all. I mean, right. You know. Right. That. But again, other, other than the taxes that the town would get because they sold it. At some point down the road. But yeah, yeah if, if they develop well, it. And if it's for, or you know, if it's a non- Or even if they purchase it, they still are liable for taxes. Right? Uh, well, they would pay, you know, well. It, not a not lot. Not necessarily, no. No. Yeah. Mm. Not if land. they developed it, and if it was a non-profit, if it was a for-profit, that yeah. would be on the tax roll. So going forward, if this, where do we want to head with this? I mean, we can, can we talk to someone in real estate? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm asking. Well, the motion was marketed. Right. The motion, the motion wasn't, didn't designate how we should do it or what we yeah. should market. I mean, 
mean, it was a, just a very general statement. Let's so market this property. Someone has to take that on. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to John, and he's kind of persuading me the best way to market it is to get rid of the building. <laughs> They just get that taken care of, bite the bullet, get it done, and uh, and then see what we've and got. And then market the land. And then see what we've got and how we want to parcel mm -hmm. it out. Yeah. But yeah. what you're saying makes total sense to me in terms of the drain it's been and could potentially be. And the longer we sit here and let it deteriorate, the less value it's going to have to anybody who's interested in buying it. Um, eventually, someone did buy that the old uh, Asphalt build, yeah, yeah. The Asphalt building at some point, and uh, this, they're turning it into something. I, storage. 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 storage, storage. Maybe you turn this into storage. I don't know. You've still well, got a leaky roof to do. For with. Craig. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is, I'm kind of like John. If you was to put a new building on, you're starting fresh. It's more economical to run. It's all that about. The land's got to be worth some money because that's got town water and town sewer up there. So it's going to be worth a pretty penny having that for a developer coming in. That's right there. So that valuable, that land's pretty valuable. If it didn't have the town water and town sewer, it's, yeah, maybe it ain't a lot, but where that's there, it's got to be worth some money. Well, obviously, you got to go into next meeting yeah. but uh, <clears throat> yeah okay so we'll recess for five minutes we're gonna obviously have to meet do, with we, this wanna, again. do we want to have this on the next agenda yeah I think it's good idea. take What's some that? time think about it and have it on the next yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. One, one thing we go ahead to yep. put together for you some marketing options yes that would be mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. at least some some things we can look at maybe we can maybe we could update the demolition yeah so prices yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. So we have a little more I mean, I know yours are all much. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. That's okay. You got up faster than I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> so rude about it. <laughs> you need to just pack that. It's another year. Uh, okay. You ready to call this back to order? Is everyone good? Okay. Great. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, When someone needs to speak, they need to come up to the lectern. That is not a podium. And it's a lectern. How come you ain't got a mic? I can't hear you. We better have a mic down there. <laughs> no, I'm good, really. <laughs> anyway, that's a lectern. It's not a podium. I've been saying podium because we always roll them together, but it's not right. It's for a lecture material, so you, you would be up there podium is something you stand up on and address a group of people. That's not a podium. We're not going to stand on it. One Some other. Of us need paper to stand up. And I understand that, too. We've had that in the past. And uh, the cell phones have to be off because it bothers the guy back there. Jim? Jim? Clint? Clint. Well, I'm going to let him in and do this himself because he's, he made us do the shades and would you say one speaking at a time because it really confused you. Okay, so we're all good. So the first item on the agenda is a public hearing, liquor license renewal for Laura Cabot. Laura Cabot Catering. I'm gonna open the public hearing. Could I have a motion on that? Make a motion to open up the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion, all those in favor? Thank you. Any public comments? And uh, you had a paper, Julie, right? Yes, from the police department. And everything's good? Everything is good. See no other public comments. You entertain a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close. We have a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? 
Thank you. I'd entertain a motion to act on the liquor license for Laura Cabot. I'll move to uh, grant Laura a uh, liquor license. I have a second? Second. second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda. We have, well, I'm calling it the next phase on lien accounts. And Julie can talk about that. And we have a release deed. And we have uh, one more marijuana committee member to add. So I would entertain a motion on them adjustments. Unless you have something else. Okay. Where do we put them? <clears throat> I, I'd say new business, I guess. Where? Under new business, under 10. 10.4 and 10.5? And 10.6. And 10.6. Motion on that. Make a motion to put uh, what, what, what was the first name? Uh, the next phase on lien accounts. Yes. A release deed. Yes. And a marijuana, we're adding a marijuana committee member. To uh, 10.4, 5, and 6. We have a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, citizens' comments. Name John Higgins, resident. I have a question for the chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the criteria for the fill the fund? I'm not talking about making out an application. What things are paid for out of the Philbert fund. What things are paid for? Yes. Uh, there's been a lot of things paid for. Okay. It's, 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 as far as criteria. I don't, I'm not aware that there are any. It's I don't just okay, well, my question is, is automobile insurance one of the payable things? I couldn't tell you that right now for sure. I don't believe so. <clears throat> but don't hold me to that. I'm not sure. We have been all over the place on that account. Okay. Not since I've been here. Not since she's been here. Well, we paid it. That's why I asked. Okay. We paid an automobile insurance policy. And okay. I, I don't know. I, my understanding is that the Philbert Fund is to help people out in the community that are in need, right? in need, need of help, lice, heat, whatever, you know, funerals. But I've never. Part of a yeah. Could have been, I don't know. It's very generally stated that the Philbrook Fund mm -hmm. is for the deserving poor. That's how it that's how it's worded. It's the deserving poor. We at one point, five or six years ago, thought it would be helpful to establish a policy. We never got to it. Yeah, no. Because it's very difficult to know what's gonna walk through that door. And I don't I think we do it ourselves a disservice to define mm -hmm. how it's gonna be used. Okay. Maybe someone can't get to work, needs a car, and doesn't and can't afford the insurance. Would you say no to that? I don't know. I don't know if I'd say yes or no. Okay, it would depend on the circumstances. So then that's what it always boils down to. Okay. I just yeah. yeah. Seems kind of out of order, but that's fine. Any other citizens' comments? The none, select board comments. I only had one question. I, I think someone already answered it. Nomination papers are available, right? No? Uh, not yet. March 2nd. March 2nd, okay. Someone asked, and I said, I'll bring it up because I wasn't sure. Jan, you had a letter to read? I do. Okay. I do. I'd also uh, just mention that. Um, there are two things going on. It's like a winter fest going on Saturday. At the land trust is sponsoring it on, um, I can't remember the name, River or something. It, it's the it's Cullen, up on Cullen Cullen. property, old Cullen property on uh, 220. And then they're also 
the Snow Crawlers Club is having something going on, and Tony Lash is having a cookout. And he's going to do it. And, uh, yeah, and uh, the ice, too. A rotating ice yeah. circle. He's going to cut a hole and he's going to spin it around with a motor. I don't know how he's yeah. going to do it. But it sounds interesting, but it it, like it's open fun. to the public for everybody. It's snowshoeing, hiking, snowmobiling, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, good outdoor. I hope the weather's good. Um, also, there's a group that's just started um, to bring back Oktoberfest. That's the heritage of uh, Walter Rose, German. And so that's going on. They set a date last I knew, something mid-October, I believe. Do you know why that was stopped? I have no idea. I have no idea. It, I think it's come and gone a couple times. Right. right. But it, it does make sense that Waldebro does it because of our German heritage. But there is a group, and they're having another meeting March 6th here at 6 o'clock. Uh, so I think if, if anybody's interested or has something to offer, something that the, they're hoping the entire town will get together and work on, so include the merchants and all and the nonprofits and the people and all kinds of things. So I thought that was rather exciting. And um, we have some wonderful students and former students in our town. This comes from, uh, he's still a student, not in our town, but he was. To whom it may concern, I cannot overexpress my appreciation for the George Gentner Scholarship. Your financial support gives me greater freedom to explore research opportunities during medical school without focusing on receiving monetary compensation. This is especially important to me because research is highly regarded by residency programs for several specialties that I am interested in. Like most first-year medical students, I am not positive what specialty I will pursue, but the first-year selection program at TUSM allowed me to shadow an ophthalmologist specializing in glaucoma earlier this fall. During this experience, I was taught how to perform exams with a slit lamp and use these skills on real patients to formulate my own differential diagnoses, which I discussed with the attending doctor and the fellow. I'm also currently doing research in ophthalmology with the pediatric ophthalmologist at Tufts. In addition to ophthalmology, I have an interest in interventional radiology, and I recently became the head of the radiology interest group at TUSM through my experience before medical school. I've also developed an interest in emergency medicine and orthopedics. I'm incredibly thankful to be in the Tufts Main Medical Center. That's what the TUSM is, uh, center program, which prepares students to serve communities in Maine and rural communities in other states. I was drawn to this program because of my experience growing up in a small mid-coast town in Maine. In fact, one of my motivating factors for pursuing a career in medicine is to serve the communities that provide me with so much support in achieving my goals. Your support has significantly relieved the financial strain on my family and myself. Thank you for your generosity. Sincerely, Calvin Robbins. Thank you. Any other select board comments? Okay. Julie? Um, I don't really have a lot to add to my written report, just that we're busy working on the budget. Um, I seem to make a little bit of progress on it, and then I yeah. get way late, and then I go back to it. Um, and also, um, the solar array, we're still waiting for that hookup. CMP, we've been pressuring them. Um, so that is hopefully, I've been told again that it's coming, but I, I, I don't have a set date for that. So that's where we're all with that. Thank you. Number eight, consent calendar. Make a motion to approve. Have a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Number nine, old business, Washington Road, Old Augusta Road intersection. John? Uh, there you go. John is missing. Okay. <laughs> I will go find John. Okay. He did. He went out the side door. Do we want to, we can move on to something. Yeah, we can go to 9.2. Uh, final adoption of retire in place policy. What we did is we added to this um, because we did find out that there's been some ch a change at the state level. So we added the, that we will comply with all state and any changes that they make. That way we don't have to change the policy every single time. 
and there was a question about, um, it was pointed out that the, in F, um, employee is only eligible for cash in lieu of health insurance for employee only, and we removed the last only. So it's just for the employee. Okay. The employee will not be a member of a union. That means that when they apply for it, they can't be a member or they, I was just kind of curious what that meant. They won't be a member. They can't be a member of a union. That's what we had discussed at prior meetings and when we adopted this the first time. So you took this only out? Only out. Do you want a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion for discussion purposes. Okay. I move for approval of the retirement place policy. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have an issue with this. We're doing we're doing a favor. It's, I think the town is, is making that accommodation, not a favor, but making that accommodation to folks who who want to retire. Re, or, uh, in place early for whatever reason um, and it's there's a quid pro quo here granted we pay them 75% of the then current salary um, it says they're not supposed to be a member of a union but it's not clear how that happens right. um, but the real problem I have is with this payment in lieu of health insurance thing I just don't think if somebody's retiring that they ought to be part of our health insurance or that we ought to give them cash in lieu of it. It should be one or the other. But I, I, I've been thinking about this ever since we discussed it the first time a while back. And I'm not comfortable agreeing to pay somebody for not taking the, the town's health insurance. If they have the option of taking it, they should take it. If they're not going to take it, it shouldn't be a factor in whether they're going to retire in place. Certainly, if they're planning for their retirement, they're either got, they've either got Social Security or they may have coverage through a spouse. Or but they don't they're have not to going to be crazy enough to stop working because they don't have health insurance. And I just, I just don't think that accommodation from our side is either wanted or necessary. That's what I'm The issue that you're going to run into is we have to offer health insurance. If they have secondary coverage, they can then, there, there's no incentive them for them not to take our health insurance and then use that as their secondary coverage. But why should we provide an incentive for them to do that? That means our health insurance program perhaps needs to be restructured. <coughs> Instead of being an HRA, I, I maybe think, it should be an HSA or something different. But, but what I'm saying is, so say you don't offer them that in lieu cash payment they're going to take the health insurance, which is much more costly to the town than the in, in lieu. The way it's currently structured, I agree. But that's not, <laughs> that shouldn't be something that we create a retirement policy around. That should be something we correct as a matter of policy. We ought to be dealing with the health insurance to make it so that. But we can't deal with the health insurance until we renegotiate contracts. Right. So in the meantime, if anybody retires, I, it's, I mean, it's, I get that you don't want to offer it, but that's... I don't want to offer the cash in lieu of it. The cash in lieu, though, is what could say, if I could get $1,000 in cash versus using it as my secondary insurance, and then the town has to pay for the insurance, I, that's where... Do we have a concrete example where this, now without discussing persons or individuals, do we have a concrete example? Well, I'll give you an example. A family plan is $17,000. <coughs> But under this, we don't pay for the, the family. Right. What is one person? But what is or one just, person? Just the employee. Uh, Eight thousand. Yeah, eighty-five almost. Mm -hmm. I think, okay, so it's it's a difference between eighty-five thousand or one thousand. No, right? eighty-five. I, I, I'm. I mean, eighty-five. Hundred. I'm just saying. If I if I was coming back, I would take the health insurance. If there was no other reason, if if I had no incentive to not, I would take the health insurance. Okay. So would I. If you offer the cash in lieu, they might take the cash in lieu instead. Which and, saves the town money. And the cash in lieu would be how much? In this particular case? For a single person? For a person. Single person. $1,000, right? $1,000. $1,000. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. so there's so not a, so. a, all right, then that, that's something I needed to understand. Yeah. Because right. it so wasn't clear to me that you had the $7,000 difference between yeah. the right. standard yeah. rate yeah. and the cash. Right, yeah. so I would say, that's what I'm saying, is if, I was, if I was doing it, I would say, well, if you're going to yeah. not offer me anything, then I'll just take then the, I'll take the Then I would change the, the yeah. policy to say that. Because the way it's written now, no matter what they get from us as cash, uh, it, it, the assumption is it's always going to be less. That's the assumption here. And that's not a valid assumption. It may not, ever, it may not be that case going forward. It may, 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 may be different. You might find that um, the situation is reversed. It, it was a board at one time that adopted the cash in lieu. So that's, it's written, it's adopted as part of the personnel no, policy. No, now we're changing it. No, 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 no this exactly is a separate policy. In order to change it, the board would have to adopt a different cap right. cash in lieu policy. And like Julie says right now, that same cash in lieu policy is in the union contract. So right. I don't think we can change, at least we can't change it from the union. But I don't really know why we, ch why we would change it because it's, it's, it's a small amount, but it's an amount that might, if someone had other coverage, they might take their spouse's coverage or whatever it is and just help pay for whatever it costs the spouse to have it right. and, and not cost the town. We're still so not defining what our exposure is. I guess that's where I'm coming The exposure is defined in the personnel in policy. In the personnel policy. Yeah. Um, is it an amount? Yes. yes, but this yes. is outside of the policy. It's a special policy in and of itself. Well, but then it that's maybe. But, but it that's why up. it says in here that um, the employee will be subject to the current policies of the town of of, yeah. of the town, as are all new hires, including having a physical prior to reemployment. That's why that's in there. But then that's contradicting the policy. If they're subject to the current policy, then how can we have this? Because this is a standalone policy. Then, if it's a standalone policy. It is. It because be this is not a negotiable a item. This is a non-negotiable item. Right. I, I I'm sorry. No, no, don't you're, you're, apologize. You're, you're, you're overcomplicating it to some degree for me. So I'm. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm all for simplicity. But. Uh, so what would you like it to say exactly? That it, you. I mean. Like it to limit the cash in lieu. To. To whatever it is by policy. Big policy, but not that's small what policy. That, but that's what that, that's limited in the personnel policy. But it's not limited in this one. But this is subject to the personnel policy. Do you want to add a line that says this entire policy is? I, um, I, I mean, that's, that's why we put that separate line in there. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I didn't read it that way when I read it the first time, and I'm still not reading that way. So what would help you read it the way you want to read I'd it? I'd need to spend a little more time now that we've had this discussion thinking it over. How urgent is this? It's up. It's up. I mean, do we have somebody who wants to retire in place and needs to have a policy in place and this would be right? Every, well, everyone is subject to, you get to choose who retires in place and who doesn't. It's, it's purely yeah. your decision. Okay. I, I would just as soon table it myself and spend another couple of weeks looking it over. And I'll come in and have a chat with you again. So you want to... But that's just, my, that's just me. I mean, there's you just three want other members. Two so you have to take members. it off the table and put it... All right. You yeah, have I, I have a motion, so I'll withdraw the motion, okay. if someone agrees, and move to table it. Okay. Second. Have a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Is that no, Jan? No. Okay. <coughs> okay, it's Jones here. Yeah. Okay. The Daigle. The John Daigle. 9.1 again, Washington Road, Old Augusta Road intersection. Come on up. Lectern. To the lectern. <laughs> lectern. <laughs> So as you know, we received the wonderful correspondence from the state, um, and I let the select board know at the last meeting that 
we were just oh so happy with the prices they gave us. Um, so that uh, solicited um, John and I sitting at my desk and John doing amazing things like he does with numbers. And um, I just thought you might want to explain how um, you wanted to proceed with Old Augusta Road. Um, what I'd like to go is if Julie could talk to the state and get the right of way now for that area. That's a big thing. Um, the other thing is the state they like to do bore samples and whatnot. Um, all we need is a couple of holes dug with a backhoe. It would probably cost five hundred dollars. Uh, if we do bore samples, it can be anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand um, dollars. So I'd rather do it the cheap way, the old-fashioned way. Um, you know, and, and work with the state. Right now, uh, with all these projects and these uh, problem areas we have, we've worked with the state before, and it was always one third. Now it's half we have to pay for. It. And they come up with a price of four hundred thousand, um, and then I go and do my rough engineering. Um, I can come in at half that price. I think this time that the town fathers or the town manager um, talk with the state and see if we can work this together. They provide the engineering services and the um, um, layout and everything else. Uh, they provide traffic control. Um, we provide the rest. I guess it's something that we can come in under $200,000, well under. Um, it's something that does need to be done. It's up to you people to decide, I guess, which one's the worst. You know, I've talked to you before about different intersections and different <coughs> issues. So that's not my decision. That's up to you guys. I know you guys, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, I don't operate that way. So, um, but it's up to you people to decide. We do have other problems in different if, areas. If you had to number them in order that you think they should be done, what would the order be? That would probably be the second one. And the first one would be? Nighttown. Nighttown. Mm -hmm. And 235. As we know, the mirrors didn't work. Um, I might have a good deal on mirrors if anybody needs any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but I think this is something that could happen. And it, it was a good program years ago. We got Bev's Hill fixed. Um, we got the corner um, 235 fixed. Um, the state doesn't have any more money than we do. So I think we could work together. Would the Mank Town in 235 be uh, less money to address? Is that oh, something you yeah. could address something? Yeah. yeah. And since the flashing lights have been up, yep. has that helped? Um, do you think at that intersection? I, I think it's slowed traffic down. Um, it hasn't helped the sight distance to see in, but it has slowed traffic down. A lot more than the mirrors. It has worked well. Um, and I'm sure you guys are going to hear about it. Even one of my trucks hit in an accident at that intersection, bumped a car. You know, it's stuff happens. There's a car pulling out under 220 or on 220? Yeah, pulling out on pulling 220. Out. Yeah. But my truck was dumping snow and backing up and had the four ways on. Warning lights on and the backup is on. <laughs> but of course, we still make it. That's the one thing that I think we have to stress is, I, and I think it's, I don't know how you miss your plows. Yeah. <laughs> we seem to have people who want to run into our plow trucks or get very close to them. And I don't know how that happens when they are 
just these huge yellow flashing lights and and I, I think it's actually in Maine it's it's almost like you know the 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 mosquitoes to the yellow bug light yep. it, it's <laughs> I made John laugh I get I get I get credit for making John laugh but it I, I just that was an aside but I could say half of the off season in that project and I to me money back in into doing these projects. You know, I I hate to say it, you know, but it's been so many years to keep cutting, you know, of course you cut the biggest budget. You know, and um, it's catching up to us. It really is. And you know, we've done different things and last 10 years, and, you know, the highway department has taken a hit, so, and now we're running into issues, and safety issues, so. Just to help us out a little bit, uh, you know, have you worked with the state before? I mean, they came up with a figure, yeah. and then did you not undercut it? I don't want to use the wrong term, but actually do a project with them and you've done the work or no? No. On behalf. This would be groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. You'd, you would well, draft the letter? You guys yeah. would draft the letter and yeah. we would? I would, um, I, well, I've already had a little bit of conversation um, with them about this. Yeah. Um, with the state? With the state. Uh -huh. uh, they weren't as receptive as I hoped. Mm -hmm. However, um, yeah. I think that um, I might have to make a phone call and maybe see if there was a way that um, maybe somebody higher up could um, grease the wheels for us to see mm -hmm. if they might be. Because I think it would be a great pilot project to see yeah. that if you do have talented public works departments, mm -hmm. as we do, that perhaps in the future it would save the taxpayers a lot of money. Yes, it would. Because then the money the state's putting in is being um, utilized much better than lining the pockets of contractors for actually saving tax dollars. Sort of like a new way of looking at that we did with mm -hmm. the um, shared service agreement with the transfer station. Yeah. Yep. It would be a shared service mm -hmm. agreement, which apparently that's a terminology that is strictly from a way that um, apparently some people in the state though do like because it has such a nice ring to it. So. Good. It is a good ring. Yeah. So we will see. Um, I thought their engineering was high considering they have in-house engineers, so we chatted about that mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, the right-of-way maps, supposedly we can get, they supposedly already exist. Yep, they should. So um, I'm hoping to get those by PDF. So what do you need from us? Uh, just need an agreement. Just, no, just <coughs> okay, you. We'll write the letter and I can have you guys all sign it. I agree to it. It does. Does the letter does the letter need to to, to, to cover um, liabilities of the respective parties at all? Well, I think we're I think Maybe too soon. Too yeah. soon, way too soon. I think this is a this is a how do you do? Why don't we do this? Doesn't it sound great? Feel good, good letter. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's ground. As you point out, it's groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Yes. Right. We're trendsetters, John. Did you ever think you'd hear that? <laughs> <laughs> on that or do you? No, I can okay. just do it and I'll have you guys sign it. Okay. New business, letter to DMR to exercise the town rights to Al Wads for 2018. Oh, my favorite subject. There he is. That's the one, you can't do it, but send the letter anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 exercise yeah. Yeah. the right. Yeah, all right, so it's just a form formality. Well, it, it is and it isn't, because I think we need to put our somewhat of our cards on the table, but um, so back in... July or August or September, at some point, um, Abdin asked me to attend a alewife meeting, which was a lot of fun. And if he was here, he would tell you the story. And I will share it just because it's so funny. And I like to make people laugh. But um, 
So I'm at this alewife meeting, and it was it was very interesting. And there's a lot of different positions on it, and there were people from all walks of life: those who want to harvest them, and those who do not want to harvest them. Um, and then they were explaining. Um, we're a little bit behind in counting. We haven't counted in a while, so we have to get back on track for that. And once we get back on track for that, we would eventually be able to harvest. Um, so that is something that we are working on to, to account this year. But um, when they count them, um, they scale them um, and all kinds of neat things like that. So as I'm sitting there listening to this, and I, I, this, is, this is embarrassing, but I, I have to share it because it's funny. Um, I was thinking, I, want, oh, I wonder what kind of scale they use to weigh those little fish. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> it was the scaling of the fish. And then they send them off to be tested. So it was one of those moments where I actually was going to open my mouth and then I sort of did and then I texted Abdin and I said, um, so like, how do they weigh them? And it elicited, do not say that out loud under any circumstances, do not embarrass me. So it was kind of a funny, it was kind of a funny story. So, um, but I appreciate it going because I learned so much about it. Um, but what we really do have to do is um, start counting. If, if, if it's something that we want to do, um, we have to count this year and, and we need to, to continue that. So this isn't something we're gonna be able to do right away. And, and I know it's a, it's a, it's a delicate subject, um, but even a lot of the environmentalists that were there that you would think would not be in favor of harvesting were um, in favor of limited harvesting. Um, so it was, a, it, was, it was actually one of the things that I, I wasn't looking forward to driving to Bangor that day, but I actually got a lot out of it and I appreciated having gone. Why did you stop counting? I don't remember that one on. Well, I believe it? that um, we moved. It was place. with MDLT. We were doing it. I, I think we were, and I think that the person who was in charge of that life happens and things just okay. get fall into the wayside. So we're going to start that up again this year, um, but we should send the letter in. But that's where we are with that particular project. And Eileen has something to say. You have to send the letter if you don't. The state can offer those rights to someone right. else. Yes. Correct. So you always want to right. send that letter. I move we authorize our town manager mm -hmm. to send that letter. Second. Second. Was that a second? Yes. Okay. I, I would just add that for us in the lobster business, there's, we go to Warren to buy our wives. We go to Jefferson. We go to Damascotta. So they do it all around us, and these towns make a lot of money on that. So we, we need to, it would be good to move on it. And if we're sending this letter, I, where you've got it dated for this, it's it's four to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay. When Liam typed it up. So, any more discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Emergency medical service billing rates. We had a question. Sorry. Are we in new business now? We are. What happened to ten cent nine six? Nine cents? No. Not that, that's ten cents. Oh, ten cents, yeah, okay. Um, we have with us our director, Richard, L the Richard Lash, and our deputy yeah. director, the Mike Poli, uh, to <laughs> discuss the emergency medical services billing rates. Come to the lectern. Come to the lectern. <laughs> In 2009 was the last time we changed the rates, and every year we review them. Uh, Comstar, who's our billing company, sends us information on it. And, and looking at it this year, it was time that we move, and we're putting, we're losing quite a lot of money by our rates being where they are now. Um, so what I would recommend to the board is you've got the paperwork in front of you there with the new rate, that uh, you approve these new rates. I, it, it, it's very, the formula to try to figure out exactly how much extra revenue this is going to bring in, there's just, there's just so many aspects of it to figure it. Um, but I'm, I'm roughly figuring about 15% more overall, which would roughly that'd be about $93,000 more for the upcoming year if you approve these new rates. Um, 
that you have before you there now. You you make you make a note in your memo to us about those who don't have insurance. Right. Um, could you just tell us how you if, if they don't have insurance normal? and if, if they can't, if you, it's not going to make any difference. If right. they can't pay, they can't pay. Whether it's fifty dollars or it's five hundred dollars, then and with the insurance companies, we can and the, those who will pay the full amounts with no contractual allowances, we can make quite a lot of more money from from the insurance companies yep. and. All the other departments, as you can see, we was behind uh, most of them. Um, and we just need to reiterate that it hasn't been raised in nine years. Yeah. So Bob, Bob asked the first question. As uh, the second one, for me, is: uh, Are we going in the hole with the current rates? I mean, how how are we doing in the ambulance business? We're not going in the hole as far. As this doesn't pay for EMS. Uh, you you get a really good service for what you pay. If you don't look at the capital, and I was just running the numbers for the end of January, uh, right now EMS, uh, where we are right this year, if you would just look dollars and cents, it's costing the town taxpayers about $69,000 because I'm 25000 over in revenue than what I anticipated. And right now my expenses, I'm about ten dollars to $11,000 under under budget on my expenses. So, you know, that's 35000 so to speak, to the good right there. So, um, so right now, if you just look at dollars and cents and not right. what was budgeted and what well, actually is costing the taxpayers, not counting capital, about $69,000 right now for their EMS service. So that's extremely reasonable to what I've, I don't know if you've been reading about what Camden Rock, what yeah. Northeast come in real low, and now that they're well over 300,000 for that area, uh, with what they're proposing in their next budget season. So it, EMS is not cheap, and uh, <coughs> it's expensive to run. It, it takes a lot of service, you know, a lot of people, and, and it's one of those things you don't know. You know, you might sit here all day and not have a call, or you might be running and have to call extra people. You just never know. Okay. On that note, Bob, sorry, I, I was just wondering whether these rates include a factor for cover capital cost recovery. Have you? No, that's no. This is it's just it's operating. This is just that's it. Well, this is just revenue period. Whether sure. it's capital okay. operating, this is just increased revenue for the town. All right. So, in, but in determining the rate, was it what will the market bear, or was it? Let's it's look at it. Well, it's, the more actual of, it's more of what we thought we could bear in this area right now for what okay. other services we're doing. So it's more like this than yeah. anything else. Yeah. I hear you. But we did look at other surrounding yeah. 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 Thank you. And if you go <coughs> from here, if you go to Massachusetts, our rates are nothing compared yeah. to what. I mean, you're talking two or three thousand dollars for an ambulance trip down there. Imagine. Wow. These are for in insurance paid seats. This is not on the person. We, okay. Everybody has to get billed equally. Right. And by law, they have yeah. to. Or we would be in violation of mm -hmm. Medicaid, Medicare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have it in our right. Right. But these are, our insurance will pay for these if I get billed for that. Th th these are the rates that of your conventional insurance company, they will pay. And, and actually, they will pay. Yeah. these are cheap compared okay. to a lot of yeah. them that right. they pay. So places. that's not, it's not adding anybody, any cost to the people. I said, well, Unless you're self paying, you don't have insurance, then yes, it would. Then it would, okay. Yeah. okay. Because we have to treat everybody equally. Uh huh. Okay. How about real quick? Right. We, we include in there um, transfer transfers as well. And sometimes insurance companies don't cover a basic level transfer, saying it's not medically necessary. And in that case, the patient gets that bill. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we try to make sure we get all the documentation to prove medical necessity. So a basic yeah. level transfer from a hospital to a nursing home, that kind of thing, that it may not be paid for. Mm -hmm. And there's a contractual allowances. I guess we're about, we get about 70% of what we bill now. That's generally, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. And since we've gone to the billing company a number of years ago and you voted to do that, there's been a big improvement on our mm -hmm. revenue. 
on that note, I just wanted to interject because I have them captive. Um, I've never had paid EMS prior to coming here. Um, I got to a few weeks ago witness um, a good save, and I I get um, and my husband can attest to this. I get the texts in the middle of the night, and I actually listen to them when they go off because I like to know where they're going and what's going on. Um, they're such a wonderful professional crew. Um, and I just, Richard's, uh, Richard and Mike do a great job. You know, that department is so diverse in their ages, in their backgrounds. Um, you can walk in there on any given day and they have such a great attitude. And, and you can talk to our, our, newest, our newest guy who happens to be um, our fire chief's son, Aaron. Um, and he's excited about what he does. And he gets that from the top down. Um, and, and you have just a great mix of people. It's, it's such a, it's a great melting pot. And um, I'm just always impressed when I talk to them when the two um, leaders are not around. Um, they're just great people to be around and they really do provide a wonderful service and they care. Um, and we just did interviews um, the other day and uh, for a new paramedic or two positions and it was a great feel um, just to hear from the paramedics and the bits and pieces that I heard just how much they love their jobs. And when you can actually go to work every day and say you love your job, that's incredible. And I just wanted to thank both of you. You're doing a fabulous job um, because it's, it's just nice to see and it's, you really do change lives every day. Thank you. Thank you. singing their praises. It's a nice letter. Yep. I, I move we approve the new schedule of rates date February 1, 2018 for EMS. Second. Good. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Pine tree engineering contract, 10.3. That was just um, informational. Um, under our purchasing policy, I can just sign that, but I just thought I would let you know that I'm signing it. I signed it. I am signing it. Um, it's for our testing up at the landfill. Went over oh, it with yeah. John. We're just renewing it, so I just wanted you to be aware okay. of it. 10.4, next phase on lien accounts. Um, this is um, authorizing Rose to um, give the 30-day notice uh, to pay all in full, or um, it would be um, foreclosed upon. There's letters that go out a letter first that you have to sign and then a letter that all of them sign. She wouldn't be sending them out until the 30-day notice until the 28th, I think it was, 28th. But um, you have to approve that next step. I think you're used to that. So that's all that is. And I apologize for the lateness. R Rose said it could have waited until the next meeting, but I figured if we just a little close, get it done. Little close, yeah. get it done. Do I have a motion on that? I so move. And second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, 10.5, release deed. This is actually a release to, for 58 School Street, because of the easement that we had, there was a, we had a right of first refusal to buy the property. We had discussed this several times last year. We said we were not interested, and this would just, um, by signing it, we're giving up our right of first refusal. Do you have a motion on that? So moved. We have a second? Is this, this, oh, go ahead. Is that a second, Jay? I'll second it, yeah. I just have some Discussion. questions on that. This is for the property in front of A.B. Gray, that, that property on Soul 58. Street? 58. Yeah, it's behind the library. Behind the library. Oh. It's between the library and A.B. Gray. Between, okay. That was McLean's? Yes. Edmonds, yeah. Her house? Yes. That, yes. that property? Yep. She's still, I think she's still moving out of it. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. 10.6, marijuana committee member. Katie, you want to talk about Freeman Zosner? We, we, um. Did I say it right? Zausner. Zausner, okay. 
We uh, interviewed Freeman, and uh, I would like to bring him before the board for <coughs> approval to the Marijuana Committee. committee. Could I have a motion on that? I so move. Second? Second. Discussion? All Does that leave us? We still are this one is short. This right? No, I think we're one short. Still, still one, one short. short. Okay. We're still one, one short. One more person. Okay. okay. So this fills one of those slots. Correct. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Do we have an executive session? Um, yeah. If you feel like having time, I do have a topic for you. Okay. It's up to you. I just stay in the executive yeah. session. Yeah, okay. It's before seven. Um, it would be okay. Craig. Go ahead, it would be to just discuss um, personnel um, issues in the town manager's office. Okay. Well, me. It's just discuss me. It's Julie. It's Julie related. Do you have the number? I do need something. I, I do need something. <laughs> but I will. Um, I have Julie to introduce her other half. Oh. So oh. Must have her met. Who's sitting off to the side somewhere here. <laughs> so, contrary to, popu contrary to popular belief, it is not John Daigle who's my husband. <laughs> although, although he is one of my office husbands. I have many. I, I, I have John Daigle, I have Richard Lash, I have Daryl, I have Mike Poli. But my actual real husband is right here, it's Ron Kaiser. Yay! Yay! Puts up with me very well. And the husband. The husband. He is the husband. He's John Daigle, just the husband. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so he uh, officially moved up on um, November 1st, and at some point we will be uh, migrating to 1122 Back Cove Road after I displace Richard. <laughs> Um, but that, that would be my husband. Yay, Ron. Yay, Ron. Welcome. So? Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, we're no. going to executive. Yeah. I, I don't have it. I have it right here. Do you want to do the executive session, Katie? No? Yes. Okay. Of course. I have a oh. motion on that? I was just in too you much of a rush. Shape. You want to make it? What was that, a motion? You want to make the motion? Uh, which one here? Which one? It's personnel. personnel. Yeah. You can go talk to D. John Daigle. <laughs> <laughs> I um, make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to one MRSA subsection 4056A uh, personnel issue for the town manager. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. You want to come out of executive session or no, Katie? <laughs> I make a motion to come out of executive session. Second. All those in favor? I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? Any discussion from anyone? <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. 709. Pretty good. We done good.